Okay, this is uh, subsystems four. Um, there's a subsystems one, two, and three that you probably should watch before you get to this one. In subsystems three, what we had is we had a subsystem right here that uh, modeled a DC motor. We can go look at it inside here if we want. Um, okay, and then go back out to the overall subsystem. There's two inputs, armature voltage, load torque, that we're modeling a varying load. Okay. And then, you know, we kind of use the signal builder here to model the varying load. And we showed this plot over here. You know, so there's no load. And then at four seconds, we get a load. And then, you know, our, our motor kind of also get a little overshoot and then uh, tries to react. And, and we can actually do pretty good control with a gain of 40. You know, if we go back and put this guy at four, um, what happens? Well, not so good. Yeah, not so good. You know, it's down there. And uh, we want it to be stay constant, but then the minute the uh, disturbance happens, we lose a lot of RPMs. Well, what we want to do now is try to uh, modify this, because this is basically a P controller, but how can we put a PID in there? Well, what we can do is we can, I mean, using subsystems. Now, Simulink actually has a PID controller, but if we wanted to do a homebrew one, we kind of do it like this. We, uh, you know, we could select that guy. All right, so that's the first thing. Select that component, which is just an amplifier, and then turn it into a subsystem. Well, we could do that with diagram, subsystem, and model reference, create subsystem from selection, from what I've selected. Great, now I've got a subsystem there. So let's kind of move some things around here. Move that wire down there. This is our velocity feedback. And let's make our DC motor a little bit bigger, okay? And now I've got this subsystem right here. Okay, and I could kind of drag that down to there, line that guy up, bring my step down to there. And, um, yeah, let's see, shrink this down a little bit. That way I can get both plots. So now I've got this guy right here. And what I want to call that guy is my PID controller. So now this system has two subsystems, a DC motor and a PID controller. Now let's, um, let's double click this PID controller and actually build it. Okay, so this is what we currently have. There's my input my output and it currently has an amplifier all right well let's see let's delete these inputs and outputs and then we'll call this guy my um p control all right let's do that p control and then let's put an integrator and a differentiator in there so let's go look for our transfer functions under the continuous block and what I'm going to do is put one transfer function there for my integral. I'm going to press control, left click, drag this down to here. This guy here is going to be my integral. Yeah, let's call this proportional instead of control. Okay, this would be proportional, integral, and then derivative. derivative all right so the idea here is that you're going to take your input signal and you are going to um, run it into all three of these guys run it into your proportional your integral and your derivative okay they're all in parallel now at the output you have to sum up the results of all those so commonly used block let's get my summer let's put three nodes on my summer and then what we've got is I can connect um, the proportional control there. Oops. The, der the integral control there, the derivative control there, and then the output right there. All right. So now I've got a P. Oh, no, this isn't integral, actually. The integral can't have that one in the denominator. So what we need to do is change the denominator coefficient to zero. Okay. Now, you might say the derivative should look really like this um, without the denominator. But that S, if you remember, is a zero at the origin, which is 20 dB per decade of gain on a Bode plot forever and ever and ever. Well, you want to allow high frequencies to get into your system so you can get rid of that overshoot and respond quicker. But you don't want to keep going forever because high frequency is noise. So there comes a value. So you want to put an S plus 1 in the denominator, which will essentially cancel out that 0 when you reach the location of that pole. And that number right there, uh, you know, it's a, typically a bigger number. That way it will be at the frequency of where you want to take out the effect of differentiation. Okay, so a derivative, even though it really should be S, we tend to throw in an S plus 1 underneath. 
All right, yeah, so let's save this guy. There's my PID controller. Let's go back to the subsystem and see what happens now. Now I've got a PID controller in there, right? And there it is, proportional, integral, and derivative. And then we sum them all, and then output, and there you go. All right, so this is what we got with just a proportional. Let's run this thing again, and let's save the output here. Okay, so it's the, the axis doesn't rescale on me. And then I'll click Run. Okay, hey, look at that. That's not too bad. Um, the system is coming up to speed, and it's slowly increasing. Okay. But then the minute the load kicks in, we, you know, it, it slows us down, but the feedback is still trying to get back up to where we want to go, the yellow line, and then when the load disappears, you know, we overshoot, and then we're still trying to go back to our, um, where we started. So really, when you talk about a PID controller, what you typically do is just start increasing the gain on P, you know, so we can put that at 20 until you get the response you want. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go up to 40. Yeah, let's go up to 40 right here. Okay, that's not too bad. And actually, that's not a bad controller. Uh, 40 right there because, you know, we get a little bit of overshoot. Now, you have to check the stability because that could that current could uh, trip breakers, you know, if it overshoots too much. And then, um, yeah, you're stabilized right here. Now, you get a torque load. Somebody kicks in some gears that uh, slows down your shaft, but then your feedback brings you back up and almost back to where you were before the load kicked in. And then when the load disappears, you overshoot, but then you go back to where you were without the load. So that's not bad right there. So, you know, the proportional kind of uh, tells you how quick you want to respond to those edges. And now the integral, we could put some uh, gain on that guy. Now let's bump that up to 10 and see the effect there. Yeah, you typically do P, I, and then D. Oh, look at that. Integration actually zeroes out the steady state error. So we get some overshoot, a little more overshoot than we probably want. And then we're trying to come up to speed. Oh, but then that load, load torque kicks in, load torque kicks in, and then it goes away. And then we, the integrator tries to bring us back to, to the unit step. So we zero out our steady state error. All right. Well, now what we can do is we can add gain on this uh, derivative to try to add more bandwidth so that we don't get these ringing, these overshoots. So let's do that. Or actually, let's bump up the integrator, see what happens. Let's put that guy at 100. Oh my gosh, whoo, that's a good controller. Boom, 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 yeah. So look what's going on here. When we have the low torque, boom, we just get a little bit of a glitch, but boom, feedback pulls us right back to where we want to be. And then when the load goes away, we get uh, some overshoot, but then we come right back. So that's not a bad controller right there. Now let's look at these overshoots right here. Can we decrease those guys? Okay, um, by adding some gain on the derivative. Well, let's do that real quick. Let's change that 10, that to a 10 right there and run it. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed. Let's see, let's put a 100 in there. And let's do this. Yeah, the amplitudes are decreasing a little bit, but you're getting a little bit more oscillation. So it is, but still, that's still a pretty darn good controller. Let's go back to the higher level system and increase our load torque because the cyan line down here, you know, between four and six is dropping down to point 0.1. Let's just make that an extreme case. Let's click that guy and change it to like a negative 1.0. Okay, so now we've got a huge, we did like point 0.1 before, now we're doing one or negative point 0.1 to negative one. So now we've got a huge load or torque load. So let's see how our controller reacts there. Okay, well, let's scale it, save it, and see what happens, yeah. Here's my unit step, that's what I want. Here's my torque load, okay, so I get a huge uh, load between four and six, and you notice, we do get some glitches and some oscillations there, and of course, you know, those transients could crash your system, you gotta be aware of those. Um, how sensitive your system is, but they are transients, they do die out. And then our feedback system, unity feedback, brings that guy back up to that step, okay? So that was an extreme case, but you're showing, shows you that PID controller works pretty well. Now, what's the next step in the PID controller that we did already? Well, we go back to our subsystem, we come along here, we do mask, we say create mask, we go to parameters, and we just do our usual stuff here. Enter P. Enter I, enter 
D. And then we have uh, P, I, and D. And now, you know, we double click. It just wants to know what are my P, I, and D values. And I'll let you do that as an exercise left for the reader. All right, there you go. That finishes up subsystem four. Thanks for watching. See you next time.